Hey guys, this is Anime Ball Z here and today we're going to be doing the 8th part of what if Goku was the legendary Super Saiyan. Please like the video to help with the video's algorithm and subscribe, it's totally free and you can unsubscribe when you want. There's nothing much else I want to say in the intro so without further ado, let's get into the video. Winter time, all the time, oh, yeah. Look at the way that I move, swag, disrespectful and I'm rude, okay. I had cocaine in the school, okay. Vegeta roars before flying ahead towards his opponent and he even causes an accumulation of dust beneath him from the speed at which he flies. He slams into Zamasu knocking him back but he evades a predicted punch and lands a range kick. However, Zamasu grabs his outreach leg and clamps onto it with unshakable force. He fiercely pulls up before slamming the Saiyan into the ground once again. As he closes in to try and punch him further into the ground, Vegeta kicks him into the air before blasting off and punching him further back and away. As Zamasu is punched up, Vegeta makes several movements to make it appear as if multiple versions of himself exist. Eventually, he forms several after images that completely throw off the deity. He swings at a fake of Vegeta, leaving himself open to get kicked powerfully in the side of his body. He travels about a meter from the force inflicted on him, but it doesn't do much to him. Vegeta then forms a large key blast in both hands that brighten out to a beautiful yellow colour. Eventually, they crackle under the dark sky and let out charged up strikes of electricity. Vegeta combines both of the attacks together and his entire body engulfs in the chittering yellow aura. Final flash! The attack zooms towards God Zamasu and hits him directly. The deity didn't have enough time to react and he has to take the attack instead. He is left with a large wound across his chest and burning palms. Steam emits off such wounds and he mutters, you pest, with gritted teeth. Vegeta lands back on the ground after hearing a call for his name and blurs forward to arrive at Goku's side. Quickly, take this ring! Trunks you up, distract him! No, I will win this alone, Vegeta demands, racing back to Zamasu with a scream. He throws a punch but the deity doesn't move at all. He just grabs the fist of Vegeta and crunches it with a squeeze. The Saiyan screams in agony and tries to let loose of his grip, eventually doing so. As he backs away, Zamasu kicks him back and stabs Vegeta in the stomach then punches him into the ground. God Zamasu raises his palm and grows a white key blast in his hand, smirking, goodbye, mortal. He mutters, while releasing the blast, however, Trunks arrives and slices the attack with his powerful sword. Leave my father alone, you've done too much damage to this beautiful world, and now you must pay, he screams as he bubbles up with rage by staring at the being that has destroyed his home. His inner aura changes to a bluer hue and he transforms into his special and unique Super Saiyan Rage form. His pupils are gone and he looks more than ready to fight the fused deity. He swings his sword madly, intending to just land a cut on his opponent. However, his opponent just evades every attack while maintaining a smug smirk across his face. Trunk swings out slightly too with a straight slash and swings himself forward slightly. God Zamasu slides past his attack and kicks him back, punching his head and swinging his sword right out of the way. Trunk stumbles back and his pupils return. Zamasu zooms towards him with his halo vibrating behind his head and he intends for a killer punch. However, Vegito catches him off guard as he shouts, Here, Zamasu, your true enemy. Zamasu stops in his tracks and looks to the side to see a new being has been formed. He leaps down from the wall that he stood on and faces his opponent. Luckily, I can mix the forms of Goku and Vegeta to give me a new form. I can't wait to show you, Zamasu. Vegito roars and powers up into Super Saiyan Blue. After this, he transcends into Super Saiyan Saiyan and fuses the two forms together to form Super Saiyan Saiyan Evolution. You see? Check out my new form, Super Saiyan Saiyan Evolution. Vegito flies right towards Zamasu and punches him once. This one punch makes Zamasu cough up blood before being hit several more times. Each hit causes extensive damage and just breaks the deity apart. He rashly flies right towards Vegito, only for him to blast him away with the use of a simple key technique. Zamasu gets knocked right into the brick wall situated behind him and is blinded by rage. How could a mere mortal overpower him in battle? No, this can't be true. Zamasu lets out his bubbling and building anger through his violent aura and a vein across his forehead enlarges as he is infuriating. He runs right towards Vegito, then they both trade punches. To follow, Vegito slips under another one of his punches and lands a punch to his chest. After doing so, he crushes some of the fusion's teeth with a punch and swings up at his knee with a kick. His entire kneecap crushes and his teeth fall out of his mouth completely. Blood drips across his shirt and he stumbles onto his broken knee. Vegito swings up and kicks him back before grabbing the chest of his new shirt and slamming him into the ground. Vegito stands firm with his dark cyan hair, staring into the deity's eyes. 
Zamasu grasps his arm with all the force that he can muster and can't budge it. In this what if, Vegito in just his base form is tens of times stronger than his cannon self. If Super Saiyan Cyan's multiplier is 10 times Super Saiyan Blue and Super Saiyan Blue Evolution's multiplier is 20 times, that means that this form's multiplier is 200 times Super Saiyan Blue. This means if we lowball Vegito to 10 times his cannon self in his base, this means that in this form he will be 2000 times his normal strength in cannon. When I mean normal strength, I don't mean in his base, I just mean in Super Saiyan Blue. So Blue Vegito from the cannon is 2000 times weaker than Vegito in this what if with Super Saiyan Cyan evolution. Zamasu is on the brink of death when Vegito pulls back and leaps into the air. He releases masses of energy and charges up his final attack. Final Kamehameha! The attack gets blasted down to Zamasu and engulfs him in the blast. The entire of the Divine Man gets engulfed in the blast. He is subdued in such blasts, but since he is immortal, he becomes the infinite Zamasu. He covers the sky and growls down at the beings below him. Once Vegito lands, he splits into Goku and Vegeta again. After this, Goku sees that this is truly a sticky situation and he reveals the button that allows him to summon Zeno. The Omni King arrives after he calls him and he sees the faces of Zamasu shower in the sky. Its dark green hue gives a creepy feeling and tint to the environment below. This isn't good, I have to get rid of this place, Omni King states, after Goku briefly explains what's going on. He raises his very short hands and releases a white energy, destroying the universe completely and taking Zamasu with him. The light emitting from his palms eventually cloaks the entire sky and universe until there is nothing left at all besides darkness. After these events, Vegeta and Beerus have a little training spa and Vegeta wants to see how strong he's become. He makes his own stance and transforms into Super Saiyan Blue, however the aura dissipates, leaving just soul streams of air rising off the surface of his body. This will be a little more exciting, Beerus announces, standing still in his tracks and waiting for Vegeta to attack first. The Saiyan blasts off his feet and speeds over towards the god. He swings wildly but Beerus is easily able to evade and lightly kick him airborne. As Beerus zooms towards him, Vegeta throws down several Ki blasts before diving in and slamming into him. The force is enough to knock the God of Destruction down a few meters or so, but overall there really isn't much damage to be made. He still stands firm with his hands wrapped behind his back. Vegeta screams while throwing a collection of swift and powerful attacks that Beerus just easily dodges. Every attack is strong and precise, but just can't seem to land on the God of Destruction. As Vegeta swings across for a hook, Beerus simply spins above the attack and holds down a large key blast before kicking Vegeta right in his stomach. He gets sent flying to the ground and almost breaks through it, leaving a big crater. As he lands, his hair darkens and he powers up into his new Super Saiyan Blue Evolution form. His aura is strong and present now, giving off a dark blue hue with a few white crystals scattered within. He flies up towards Beerus and cocks back his fist in preparation for his attack. He shouts loudly while flying up and Beerus doesn't seem to be moving at all. With all its speed, he still misses the punch and swings right past his face. All the god has to do is move his head out of the way. After this, he swivels around and kicks Vegeta in his open chest, reverting him to his base form. Finishing off the bout, Beerus closes in with an elbow then kicks him down with a double drop kick that slams him into the crater once again. Vegeta in agony coughs blood and Whis appears in between them to stop the fight. Don't you think that was too harsh Beerus? He asks in annoyance, looking back at Vegeta's significant injuries. I barely even hit him, get up Vegeta. The Saiyan is too far and weak to even hear this, just continuing with his loud coughing and wheezing. He is also covered in blood from his wounds and also mouth after some devastating blows. I'm fine, Vegeta insists, being barely able to get the words out. Luckily, he isn't anywhere near death and with some good healing and rest, he will be just fine. After some good amount of time, Vegeta is set to go back to Earth for the birth of his daughter Bulla. Goku goes back to Earth but kinda just leaves after to meet the Omni King Zeno. Once he does, things go similar to the battle between Gods of Destruction and Beerus is the one to win it as in canon. Next, there is a turn of events between the battle of Goku and Toppo. Goku starts off the battle in his base form and Toppo also starts with no enhancements of any sort. They fly at each other and Toppo is clearly superior to his combatant. Goku swings up for a kick but Toppo swerves past the hit and slams him into the ground. 
However, Goku is able to flip back up to his feet and block an incoming punch. The Force slides the Saiyan back several meters and even leaves a bruise hidden under his gi. Topper then closes the space with a horizontal kick that Goku blocks as well. Sliding to the edge of the ring, he jumps off his opponent's shoulders then powers up into his legendary Super Saiyan form. He stares down with no pupils and punches the ground with extraordinary force. He even cracks the surface and closes in for a barrage of attacks. Toppo is able to evade and manage many attacks but gets hit by a ranged jab and a powerful right hook. These hits are way more powerful than his canon counterpart's attacks in this fight but he is still far below Toppo in terms of power. The same stands still on Toppo also comes to a halt. What are you up to? Toppo asks, irritated that they have both simply stopped. He seems to be a fighter of honour since he stands still and doesn't move a muscle. Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan God form but then ascends into his legendary Super Saiyan God form, giving off a pure brown aura. What a dirty colour for an aura. However, I sense it has something to do with the aura of a god. Allow me to use the same form too. His aura appears and they both race to each other. Goku lands a powerful punch that Toppo is actually forced to block smartly. He swings around for a kick but is also blocked. Toppo throws his own attack but all Goku does is backflip away to evade the incoming strike. His speed is greatly amplified now and his strength is too. Just to put into comparison, Super Saiyan Blue Goku from canon was bested by this version of Toppo quite badly. However, Goku's many times stronger than that version of himself in this form alone. To put on top of that, this form is 5 times weaker than Super Saiyan Blue. Their punches clash together and they seem to be equal as of now. As Toppo follows up with a hook, Goku weaves under the attack and strikes at his ribs before extending up to chip at his chin with a hook from his opposite arm. As he stumbles back, Goku is able to land the straight kick before closing in and slamming a key blast into his chest like a Rasengan. The trainee god of destruction slides back and holds his arms up tight to prevent from any other attacks. You have grown so much in power with those transformations of yours, isn't that how you gain your strength? Pretty much, Goku claims, powering up into his next and biggest form, Super Saiyan Saiyan. His aura is crisp and pure, almost giving off an angelic pressure. He drops his arms and then dashes towards Toppo. He is barely able to react before getting stricken in the stomach so hard that blood and spit is forced out of his mouth. He is hurled off his feet, then Goku swivels around swiftly before kicking the man so hard in his nose that he slides to the edge of the ring. As he does so, Goku leaps off his planted feet with immeasurable force and punches him in his chest so hard that he is blasted off the ring entirely, thumping the ground as he lands. Oh wow, Goku's so strong, Zeno exclaims, pleased with the battle that he was lucky enough to witness. The Saiyan reverts back into his ordinary state and exhales calmly. In this continuity for the Tournament of Power, Tien is replaced by Goten and Krillin is replaced by Trunks. Both do have parents that really want them to stay on Earth, but they realise that the fate of the universe is at stake and these warriors will be needed to help. At the end of the day, they are some of the strongest fighters in the universe behind Goku, Vegeta and Gohan. With their fusion technique, they'll be beyond tough matchups for the tournament. Piccolo is also far stronger with his aura of a god form and can even rival the likes of legendary Super Saiyan 2 Goku with the new power he has. Including Kaioken which he hasn't tried to combine with his form yet, that can make him far stronger than even that. The fighters prepare and are all ready. Goten and Trunks are a little scared but are confident in what they can accomplish with the arrogant god Goten's fusion. Gohan is also on the verge of Super Saiyan Blue and has mastered Super Saiyan God to a considerable degree. Once the battles start, the first few are completely dominated by the Universe 7 fighters. Almost all of them have a lot of power and can handle their own against some of the lesser foes of the tournament. Goten encounters the Flying Birdman above the tournament and almost appears behind it with his new levels of speed, striking it down to the surface with a powerful kick and hurling down a Kamehameha. The bird is literally toasted in that blast and stumbles right off the ring entirely, being eliminated. Goten lands and closes in next to Trunks. We can stay in the game, Trunks. We can do this. Well, not in our bases we can't, Trunks states. That is true. Both fighters power up into their Super Saiyan 2 forms and their auras seem to connect as they clash together. Some of the fighters next to them are astonished by their power. Goku gets grabbed from behind and is unable to move around. I got him, I got him, someone declares, keeping him strapped down and stationary. However, he just transforms into a Super Saiyan and pushes them away. The Prime Trooper slides backwards in shock of the Saiyan's power. He ducks under the attack and punches them in the stomach so hard before grabbing them by the muscly arm and slamming them into the ground. 
As he slams Goku's shoot down the condensed Ki blast that destroys the tournament area surrounding him. While some other pride troopers approach him, Goku powers up into his legendary Super Saiyan 4. So Jiren isn't even worried about me at all, Goku realizes, seeing the athletic looking warrior fighting in the distance. The trio de danger approach Gohan, who is much stronger in his what if. I can't even put into context how much stronger he is. As he sees them approaching, he powers up into his ultimate form, glistening within a powerful white aura. His black hair flows under the pressure gracefully and he speeds off towards one of the fighters. He lands a punch and they manage to block, getting slid back and significantly injured. As another one approaches him, he swivels around and kicks them in the side before closing the distance and striking again, but this time with his fist. The fox-like warrior stumbles back with a large bruise across his head and a broken rib. The two remaining fox brothers advance towards Gohan, but he seems calmer than ever. His eyes swiftly switch between the two and he makes up a good combination of movements to contain them both. Bergamo, the blue fox, throws a punch that Gohan evades skillfully. To follow, he strikes him in the liver area and pulls him around so quickly that he uses Bergamo as an actual human shield against an energy wave from Basil. His own brother blasts him to the edge of the ring and Gohan flies after him as he tumbles and slides to the edge of the ring. With a powerful kick, he is hauled right off it and Gohan deals with the two remaining fighters, Basil and Lavender. An aura of red and orange cloaks the same as the two fighters approach. His eyes are closed, but then he pulls them open, revealing their glistening red heat. His hair shifts into that same colour and he fully transforms into a Super Saiyan God. So that will conclude the 8th part of what if Goku was a legendary Super Saiyan. A much longer video, I'm looking at the Audacity minutes right now and it says 16, so that's actually pretty impressive and I think that's one of the longest what if parts I've ever made if not the longest. Tell me something you liked about the video or something that I should improve on for the next part in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.